Hey everybody, welcome to LS Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching as always. Uh, continuing with the Craftsman thing here in the garage. I feel like every mower I get is a Craftsman here lately. Not complaining about that. We have a LT1000, a gray one here. Uh, early 2000s, probably about 2003, 2004. Guess the year. You know, I like playing that game. Um, and it's been sitting up a little bit. Again, I got it in a lot of four riding mowers. I got a Southern States rider you've seen on the channel, a Yard Machines rider that you saw on the channel, and a Craftsman that's pretty much a donor, has a, a 23 horsepower Briggs and a good hydrostatic, and that's about the only good things on it because it's been rigged quite a bit. But this is number four in that. It actually has a two-bend bagger with it too. And so I'm already good on the lot in terms of I've already paid for the lot. And so whatever I make off of this is just sole pure profit, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and see what we got going on with it that I know of so far and see if we can go ahead and get it fixed here coming up. Okay, guys, so let's give us a tour here. Let me get my little stool out of the way. It's the LT1000 Craftsman. They're bread and butter back in the early 2000s. I, the, the deck belt seems like it's a little thin on it, which means that the deck was probably misaligned at some point. I'll have to uh, change that deck belt out. I've got one here. 17 and a half horsepower Briggs. It's got the small back wheels. And uh, so this is a kind of a lower trim LT uh, with this type hood on it. Same deal as this. All this this is a this is even a lower model than a LT1000. LT1000 has a couple of extra perks than a regular Craftsman, a little bit bigger engine, from what I can tell, and just a nicer appearance. Uh, mow in reverse, or it does have the reverse safety feature on it, which means that it is probably at least a 2005 model or newer. Um, what I know so far, we'll get the year in just a second. This it needs replacing because the cable's bad on it. Looks like somebody's already tried to remedy it. Cable may not be bad, but the deck is frozen like they always are. The brakes, I wonder if the brakes work on it. We'll find out. Not, no, not really, so. Brake fix is going to be in the works as well. Uh, oh man, what else? Pretty rusty crusty. Um, a lot of freeing stuff up. It's not rusty, but it's going to need some freeing up here and there. 17 and a half horsepower, so it has the original engine on it. Anybody want to guess the year? Let's do it. I'm going to say 2005 because of the reverse feature. And uh, we'll find out. Yep, so 041805. So it was uh, April 18th of 2005. So anybody who guessed that, you are correct. Look at the deck real quick. One of these wheels is uh, loose, so I just need to put some bolts in that. That'll be fine. It's all here, y'all. Hope it doesn't have a broken compression release. I probably just spoke that into existence. But it's got a Walbura carburetor on it. I wonder if it's leaking. We'll find out. And is it going to turn for me? Oh. It might be all right. I just have some fuel in the oil, but the only thing to figure out is, uh, you know, Put a battery in it. See what's going on with it. Plug wire's good. Uh, looks like somebody's been in this though, because it's missing missing uh, the correct bolts in the front here. Uh, fuel line's off, so got the fuel line, which I'll need to replace because it's pretty old. Uh, blade engage cable. So all I'm gonna do, real quick. First and foremost, let's put a fuel line on it and put a battery in it. I'll do that off camera. We'll see if I can get this thing started, if we can get it started. 
then we'll uh, work on everything else. Okay, y'all, we've got a battery in it. I haven't put the fuel out on it. I just want to see if it'll turn over like it's supposed to. Hopefully, hopefully. No. Screams compression release to me, y'all. Ugh. Well, looks like we're going to be breaking this one open. I'll check the battery real quick, but. It cranked the 16 horsepower just fine the other day, so. Got 12.3 in it, which is not enough, but it could have just tried to suck it all out there. So let me put another new battery in it and see if it's going to have enough gusto to turn it. But nine times out of ten, it doesn't. Um, that's very indicative of a broken release. So, all right, guys, I have a little bit of promise. Um, a new battery did turn it over. Although it seems a little sluggish, so it might just need a valve adjustment. But, let me throw a little bit of this in here and see what happens. Those. All right, let's see what we got here. Probably not going to make it around the pump. All right, here we go. Excellent. So Guessing that the valves are just out of adjustment. That's no biggie. Sounds like it ran longer than just if it had a carb issue, or than if it just had starter fluid. Let me put a fuel line on it. Let's see if we can get this thing to run. It's got enough oil in it to run, so I'm not really concerned about that. Okay, guys, so we're going to see if we can get this thing cranked here. I put gas in it. I confirmed that the uh, anti-backfire is clicking at the very least, which means it's probably pulling it back. So if I can get enough juice to get it around, we'll see what happens here.
little dirty. Shifter's a little hard. driving. That's half the battle right there. Just let it backfire. Maybe not. So, valve adjustment, probably. Gotta let the engine cool off before I do that. But, it does run, I wonder if it's, I wonder how well it starts back after you. Oh. Yeah, so she's pretty rough. Either with valves or something along those lines. Let's see if I can get it restarted though. Seems super weak though, like super weak. It's very interesting. Like I said, it could be valves, it could be a worn camshaft. Could be a compression release. I'll have to keep cruising, but we know it runs. I got it to start. Um, I just need to get it to restart now. So uh, I think we've got half the battle done. I just need to keep on cruising, y'all. 
All right, y'all, so we are looking at, I'm looking at this still, and I think I've got a solenoid issue because whenever I do this right here, it's got 12.6 volts at the battery. So I know that that's good. I just, and I also have a carburetor leak too, so I gotta work on that as well um, with the carburetor, but that's pretty much a given on something that's been setting this long. But um, solenoid's pretty easy, especially once you get the, ta the gas tank removed, which is just two 10 mils or three eighths. Just access it right here. Unplug the battery. Unplug these two connectors. These are ground, so they're interchangeable. They go on either side. Just whatever you're feeling on a given day, sorry. 7 16th nuts you take off right there. There's your positive. Your positive. Again, disconnect the battery so that you get rid of all the power that's going to them. And uh, swap the solenoid out. Some of these have like a little clip on them. Some of them are tied together with a two bolts instead of one. It just kind of depends on what you got. It looks like this one had been replaced at one point, but something's causing it to not... Well, it's a little loose right there, so that could be it, actually. Let me get a 7 sixteenths and tighten it up. And uh, see what we can do here. So, let me see if I can access y'all while I do this. So, it's like it's not getting enough oomph on the solenoid, but it sounds like the solenoid is good still. It just kind of depends, I guess. Let me get my 7 sixteenths out. Just be careful not to cross terminals here. Just get your wrench out, tighten it up some. That's better. I wonder if that's that's enough to cause things to be better here. not even allowing it to fire, which is weird. Yeah, whatever I did just screwed something up. Oh, because I don't have any ground wires in. Ha ha! Put your ground wires back in. Silly, silly. There we go. Now. Yeah, it's insanely slow. Okay. Check to make sure the starter's not clogged up, too. That the bearings aren't out in it. So, let me get these off. Keep y'all on camera for all of this, why not? Live troubleshooting here. Live to tape troubleshooting to be super technical. Okay. Back bolts are already off. Gas is just everywhere. See how bad these. Oh, this starter is toast. So I think the brushes in this starter are completely gone. Check this out. So, like, it's almost impossible for me to turn this thing. I doubt this is gonna help any, but. Not that big of a deal because I've got one waiting in the wings, ready to rock and roll. I need to. Wow, that thing is super locked up. I know there's a way to rebuild them and clean them. I've got one on this blown engine which just keeps uh, like the gift that keeps on giving back there. 
it's already donated donated a couple of uh, items so I'm going to take off the take off the two starter bolts and the 7 sixteenths right here. Oh, there, there we go. I just pulled something out of it. What I usually do for these is I get some vice grips, needle nose vice grips. Or you can get a, a, a ground out 17 or a 7 sixteenths inch, either one. Pretty sure the starter is toast though. Toast! Just like my Honda Element, it's a toaster. It's the colloquial name for it but this thing's pretty bad got half inch to get off to get them off on the inside there let me grab those tools wobble extension oh, I have to get back there to it there we go I'm just gonna take these off take those two off right here starter comes right off when you do that and uh, we'll continue on after that all right guys I just kind of went to town on this off camera but I wanted to say uh, obviously you see it's much cleaner than it was um, I ended up putting a carburetor on it I had another one here but it was clogged somewhere um, and so I put a brand new one on it I got a bad batch to where they're not drilled out properly for the low speed jet so i drilled the low speed jet to nine and a half thousands and that seemed to uh to do the trick for us um and um what else have i done the starter i finished putting the starter in i remember i did a bunch of a lot of stuff off camera so i had a starter here from a blown up engine and that worked it seemed like it was starting and running reliably after i did that i do need to tighten those bolts down right there some um and i'll do that here in a second but i did let it sit for a couple hours so let's see if it does crank up i did put atf in the tires and drove it around some just to kind of let it go through them this tire actually did not need anything it was already full Grease the front end and all that good stuff. So, the only thing about this one is the part brake is a little weird. It's a little off. So I actually have to, I'm gonna sit on the mower and do this. I got some deck work to do 
Yeah, park brake's a little weird, but and the brakes don't work. So we gotta get those fixed. And the deck pulley. But the tires are pretty straight, which is good. I don't have to do any alignment issues on this. See when I push the brake, we're just cruising. So I'll back it down. drive it into its rightful place for the evening. Bless me. I can turn down the idle a little bit too, but that's awesome. This one's running and driving, and that's uh, most of the battle. The rest of what's wrong with this is the easy stuff, because it, it's, it's dealing with the brakes, which are pretty easy on these, and it's dealing with the deck, which is just a matter of getting some wire brushes and stuff out and taking it off and unfreezing it. So This one will be done tomorrow. Uh, as all goes well, and maybe I can get my garage looking a little bit better too. We'll see. But um, I'll show you the deal that I do with the deck. Y'all see me take the deck off of this a, a lot, so I don't know if I will show y'all that aspect on this one. But I will show you what I do in order to get the deck back functional again. We also need to put a blade and gauge cable on it pretty sure unless this one will free up but this mower is a little rusty crusty so I have a feeling we're gonna have to do that as as well let me clean up for the evening and call it a night I'll catch back up with y'all tomorrow and we will work on the deck and all that good stuff with this thing all right guys we're gonna get this deck off which is pretty easy to do on these cable driven LT 1000s. I have a belt waiting on this, so I ain't got to worry about that. So we've got a clip right here, clip right here. Number three, I usually like trying to take out of the front, which is right there. Number four is in the front as well, right there. Number five is right there number six is the tensioner pulley which is right right here you just pull a pin out and then you take the deck off or take the deck down and slide it out you take it off of the mountains and whatnot so I'm going to go ahead and do that when we get the deck off, I'm going to get the, we'll take the adjustment arm off and we'll lube it. We'll scrape the, uh, take the wire wheel and scrape off the pulleys, the rust on them before we put a new belt on, which I think I've got one right here for it. If it's a 144959. It's got the numbers on it somewhere. Yeah, so that's a new deck belt for it. I'll set that aside for us. Help clean my bench up here a little bit. So, got that going for us. And then I will... I'll catch y'all at the point where I pull the deck out. Alright guys, I got those clips and rods off like I mentioned. Right here. Of course the tensioner. The one in the back. And we slid... Got everything up. I 
raise the deck up to the highest level. You can pull it out from either side or pull it out from the left side because I have that's where I have the most room in the garage here right now. And here we go. looks like it's frozen here. A little bit of rust has kind of captured this deck right there. But that's really the only spot which is pretty common but it's uh, Good around all the spindles, which makes which is uh, the most important thing. I don't think I have any JB Weld or anything here. That that pulley is pretty done, I think. But I can feel it not really moving on me. Unless it it's like a break it free from the rust. I might be able to, but I'd be just kind of losing time on that. Spindles. Uh, so that one's free. That one seems like it's locked up. Let's see what we can manage with this. We might be able to get it freed up. Might just be rust locked. Oh, there we go. Yeah, rust just kind of got it. There we go. It'll be a little bit of growling, but. Pretty, pretty good. Now, let's see what we can do about this. Oh, it's It's turning now, it just needs a little leverage. Just spraying some lube under the pulley down here on the bottom. Just feels a little tight. But you remember, these things haven't been run in a long time, most likely, so. Once we get some grease and once we get them flowing again, we'll probably be all right. Get some heat into them. So, all right, we got everything freed up then, except for the blade and gauge. So, let me get, that's much better. I'll go ahead and take this belt off, because it's very, it's pretty bad. A little bit of a tight fit here, but we can get it off. There we go. So, that belt we can just kind of throw in the trash. We don't need it anymore. What's next for me is I'm going to get a 9 16 and we're going to take this nut off right here. That nut right there. And uh, I'll show you the whole tensioner pulley deal. 
we got to do a little bit of wire brush action on the pulleys to get them smooth on the inside so it doesn't eat up another belt. So. Let me grab this. Just put your hand under there because it's a square, square bolt, square head on there, and uh, it'll just spin around if you don't just put your finger under there. So remember the order this comes off. We've got pulley. which is getting a lot better already. Washer. This is one of them moving washers that allows the pivot, pivot washer. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off and you got this other small washer here. So what happens is on these, pretty badly actually, and this one's a good example. You see that groove right there that has gotten into this? So, I just take those grooves and what I do is with an angle grinder, I just put in a vise with an angle grinder, I just grind them grooves out and then I come over here with a wire brush and kind of wipe this down, smooth it out as well, put some lube on it and that helps the, that helps the blade mechanism. While I've got it off, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a quick coat of uh, black spray paint as well. Uh, i got to get some of this excess grass and stuff off of it, which I'll do with the, with the wand. And I have to install one of these uh, return springs, which they're always missing on these, so that's not a big deal. But when we got freely spinning pulleys, we just need to wire brush and grind those down. I'm going to do that off camera. I will show you the finished product. I think everybody knows how to use a wire brush and an angle grinder and I'll show you what we end up with. Alright guys, I have cleaned up the underside of this where it's going to be hanging out at the uh, hanging out on this right here clean this up a little bit more here. Like I said, I'm going to try and clean the pulleys out as well. Smooth them out a little bit, especially in this one. So, remember, we're going to throw some lube on this. Kind of running out, but we'll get enough on here. Do the same thing on the bottom of this. Okay, so. This washer, followed by this tensioner. Assembly. Let's see. I'm going to go like that. That. It doesn't go like that. It kind of comes over here. I'm sorry. Fits under the, fits under the blade brakes, what it does. Line everything up. 
washer and all that good stuff. Okay, now we're going to take this. Place it in there. You can see it's spinning freely, so that's what you want. Line it up. Put this top pulley on relatively close to this mounting post. Now we're going to put the bolt in the bottom. And now we'll put the nut on top. Got the wrong, got the wrong one, y'all. Let's put the 9 16 back on here. That's a lot better, a lot more free, right? So the more we do that, the better it should get. And then I'll go ahead and put that spring on as well. decks I've had. The spring just goes in like this. Okay. So you can see it's doing what it needs to. That's a good thing. So now what I'm going to do is clean off the deck a little bit more and paint it. I don't have anything big enough to infill that hole. And I look around the rest of the deck and the rest of the deck's not rotted out to the point there's a hole through it. That's a common place. It's not threatening the mount or anything. So I might just have to be what it's going to be. Um, I am going to take it and kind of scrape some off, off of the bottom and see what I can do with that. Um, but I want to be cautious because I want to scrape too much off and make the deck pretty brittle. But apart from that hole, it seems like it's all right, all things considered, thankfully. All right, y'all, we're gonna end part one there. So we've got it running, we've got it driving, um, and we ended up getting the, the deck uh, finished, essentially, in terms of blades and whatnot, being able to return and engage like they're supposed to. Um, so in part two, we'll go ahead and put the deck back on it. I do wanna, I gotta do uh, cable, an engagement cable. I've got to fix the brakes or at least adjust them and we're going to put the deck back on it and test it out. So we're getting pretty lengthy in this video. I didn't want to turn this into a monstrosity of a video. So we're going to split this into two parts. So you'll see part two on the next video. But this is a very good example of pretty much if I get a Craftsman in that's been sitting a while, especially like an LT1000. Um, this is pretty much uh, a pretty standard issue, I guess you can say, is what I've got to do to these things. 
so um, again first one was get it running a lot of times it's just carb issues this one was a starter so that was a, a little bit different for me I don't really have a lot of starter issues but we put a starter on it, we put a carburetor on it, we put a battery in it, we put ATF in the tires, we've gotten the deck fixed. So we've made a lot of progress. And all these are pretty easy as well. So we'll do the remainder of what we're going to do to this mower in part two, and I hope to catch you then. See you next time.